happy and uh, healthy with this, with this Christmas season, even though it is kind of dreary outside today. Uh, there's a few announcements today. Seems awfully, awfully loud and echo. Um, I want to call your attention, there's church council meeting today, but uh, next Sunday evening at 6 o'clock is the children's program, and any children or grandchildren of the congregation that are interested in that, please uh, contact Mariette, and we can be sure that you get involved. And then we have Christmas Eve candlelight service on Thursday, December 24th, also at 6 p.m. Uh, and then we need to congratulate uh, Kennedy. Uh, she was accepted at, to the uh, uh, Mays Business School at TAMU uh, just this week, and so that's pretty special. Um, otherwise, if there are no other announcements, then we'll go on. Oh, yes, uh, there is always an opportunity to sign up to serve as uh, ushers, liturgists, etc. And the book is in the back of the church. Uh, while we're talking about the back of the church, remember that we're not passing the offering plate around, so you are welcome to put your offering in the plate, either coming in or going out. It's also at the back of the church. Um, let's go ahead and stand and open with the hymn number 21, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling.
The light glowing from our Advent wreath is burning brighter. This radiance warms our hearts and fills us with joy. The Lord has done great things for us. Let us rejoice. May those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy, making our dark, darkness bright as God's day. Those who go out weeping, bear the seeds of sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy. Please join me in prayer. Dear God, we carry many burdens and worry over many things. Help us to hear your promise in this Advent season that in hearing we may receive the Spirit's gift of joy. And may our spirits be kept sound at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, whose in name we pray. Amen. Please rise and join in the call to worship found in your bulletin. God's love has been made known among us. God has sent Christ into the world for all people might live. My friends, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. for the beauties that surround us in amazing ways in all kinds of people and places. Uh, we thank you for your spirit, which dwells among us as we worship together. As we worship this day, may you open our hearts so that we can see your presence. In the name of Jesus, amen. You may be seated and invite children to come. Well, you can stay probably where you are. I think I can come to you. How's that? <laughs> We're going to be talking today about seeing. And you've seen stuff before, but I want to see what you see when you look at this. What is that? Have any idea? What does it look like? A vase, maybe? Feel like a vase you put flowers in? That's one thing you can see, but you can also see something else if you look at it a different way. You see anything else in there? What about if that's a person's face? And that's a, another person's face, and they're looking at each other. You see that now? Isn't that cool? Just depends on what you're looking at. If you're looking at the black, you see faces. If you're looking at the white, you see a face. That's just one. This is my favorite. Here's a picture of a lady. Is she an old lady or is she a young lady? Um, a, young. a young lady. Okay. What do you see? There's an old lady in there, too. What if you think of, it's a young lady if she's looking away. That's her eyelash right there, and that's her head scarf, that's her ear. But what if it's, if you look at this, this is her chin, and that's her mouth, and that's her nose. Oh, now I see an old lady. Do you see the old lady? You do? Great. That's cool. Just depends on what you're looking at. You can see it's all, it's the same picture, but it depends on the way you look at it. Uh, here's one that when I was growing up, we used to carry these, put them in our Bibles, they're bookmarks. What's that say? I don't know, it must be a Hebrew saying. Jesus. It does. You, if you look at it the other way, you see Jesus written in there. Just depends on how you look at it. Isn't that cool? It's a lot of stuff, not just in these pictures like this, but that's the, the message today is, depends on how you look at things sometimes. And Jesus said, I want you to look with your heart. Because when you look with your heart, you see the good things, not the bad things. That makes sense? Good. Let me, I've got some candy for everybody. <clears throat> like Starburst? You can pick two or three. Or if you want to give some away to somebody else, pick four or five. There you go. <laughs> Do you want some too? Thank you. 
There you go. Thank you all. Thank you for your attention.
day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Before I read the scriptures, I always like to do prayer concerns because of following the uh, message of the day, I always like to, to pray, and I want you to make sure that you know who I'm praying for. I want to remember Carolyn Goldstein in our prayers. Uh, she, on top of everything else she's been dealing with, with the shingles and uh, the pains and lots of things going on. Now she's got heart trouble, so she has been taken to Columbus Hospital and will be transferred probably as at a Methodist Hospital right now. Uh, so they'll be looking into that to see the extent of the heart trouble and what she needs to do about it. So keep her in your prayers. It's been a really tough time for her. I understand Debbie has got shingles. Bless your heart for being here, Debbie. I'm not going to ask where that came from. I'm sure Warren had nothing to do with it. But I know that it's a painful time. That's a tough thing to deal with. So keep, uh, keep Debbie in your prayers as she recovers from that. We had the, the celebration of life for Carol Eccles Wise. That may mean something to a few of you. They grew up in this community and uh, consider this church their home. I thought it was especially appropriate. Some of the stained glass windows that you'll see up in the balcony and the two that are facing the road, the Eccles family put together for our church. Her husband, uh, Randy, was one of the architects for the Family Life Center or the Educational Wing. So they had a lot of connections to the church. And just remember them in your prayers. They were all here to celebrate Carol's life on Friday and uh, need our prayers for comfort and support. Tom Tilke said last week, he said, you won't see me for a couple of weeks. I'm going to be checking out whether I need hip surgery or not. I don't know whether that's happened, but I do know that it's preparing to happen. So keep Tom in your prayers as he goes through that. Ellen Hertzig continues to get uh, cancer treatments, and so keep her in your prayers through that ordeal. David Hussman, who was a coach in Schulenburg and in Hallettsville, many of you a dear friend, still very critical right now. He has been in ICU and uh, been on life support and still really have a tough time, so keep David Hussman in your prayers. And also Marvin Magura is a uh, friend of the Canes that uh, uh, got cancer and it's really getting serious now, so keep Marvin Magura in your prayers as well. Are there others that you'd like to list? And by the way, congratulations, Kennedy, that uh, acceptance into this school. Her brother said, Daddy, this is a big deal. I mean, this is like, like 80 out of 2,000 candidates get selected for that, and you got that. And so uh, you're going to be in some amazing company, and we celebrate with you on that. Any other prayers of concern or thanksgivings? Yes? I'm going to see the doctor in the medical center Thursday. Okay. See Gloria? Work out. And it's going to tell you what? About my aneurysm. Okay. Whether, whether you need to do any work on the aneurysm. Or okay. What I decide on it. Okay. All right. Keep going. Yes? Uh, Reverend Dean is still in his prayers. Uh, okay. The last I've heard about Reverend Dean is he is still in the medical unit in the, uh, the assisted living home that they're in. But, uh, yeah, but not really recognizing Shirley when, when she comes in. So he's really slipping right now. So keep uh, Ernie Dean and particularly Shirley in your prayers during this time. Uh, one other thing I wanted to say during the announcement time is uh, Di and I are going to sing again this morning. We would really appreciate it when you all applaud after that. I'm just saying thank you. Uh, I'm a little uncomfortable with you doing that because I don't know whether you're happy that we sang so well or just glad it's over. <laughs> so I'd feel better if you just say amen and people won't know whether you're happy or sad. So, uh, if you do that, that would please us. Any other announcements? If not, then let us hear our scripture lesson for this morning taken from the book of Thessalonians. By the way, I'm choosing texts that are not your traditional. I'm assuming that you've heard about John the Baptist almost every Christmas forever. And uh, I'm trying to pick the ones that 
we'll, we'll work John the Baptist in there, but I want you to hear some of the other texts and what they have to say about this uh, holy season. Uh, the text from the Old Testament is from Isaiah 61. It's the one that Jesus quoted when he said, I came to bring uh, good news to the poor, release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Uh, the text from Thessalonians is Paul's encouragement to the church in Thessalonica as he leaves. <clears throat> Starting in chapter 5, verse 16. Be joyful always. Pray at all times. Be thankful in all circumstances. This is what God wants from you in a life in union with Christ Jesus. Do not restrain the Holy Spirit. Do not despise inspired messages. Put all things to the test. Keep what is good and avoid every kind of evil. May the God who gives us peace make you holy in every way and keep you in your whole being, spirit, soul, and body, free from every fault at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who called you will do this because he is faithful. May God add blessings to the reading and the hearing of this is holy word for us. Amen. Would you pray with me? Open the eyes of our hearts, O oh God. Make your word be a lamp for our feet, a light for our path. May your spirit dwell up in us in a way now that will really help us hear what you have to say to us this day. So may the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be good in your sight. You, O oh Lord, are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. You know the Christmas song that is entitled, Do You Hear What I Hear? Uh, we're going to sing that in a little bit in case you don't remember that song. But it's a song that gets it right because, just like we explained with the children's message this morning, there's more than one way to, to look at things. Do you see what I see? Do you hear what I hear? Do you know what I know? I'm wondering, what would have uh, been your reaction if you had been in Bethlehem at the time of the Savior's birth? Would you have any idea what was going on? Would you have been looking and celebrating? Would you have gone to the stable? I'm thinking, I might have missed that. I watched a good uh, documentary. A little, uh, it's a program by uh, Frederick Larson, who was a uh, lawyer, but he decided he got interested. He wanted to do a project one year with a star while well, being a lawyer. He had to find out what is the star? How long did he do it? What? So he did a thing called Bethlehem Star. He started digging. He found out some amazing stuff about the Bethlehem star. What was happening? Why didn't everybody see it? I mean, I get the image that, boom, there was this huge light, and everybody went, oh, maybe we ought to follow that. But remember when, he, when the wise men went to uh, Herod? He said, what are you talking about? I haven't seen anything in the sky. Tell me where this, this is taking place. And they said, well, we've seen its star. Why didn't everybody see the star? But no, they knew what they were looking for. And Frederick goes back, he gets this, this program, this astronomy program, where you can rewind the clock. He said Kepler back in the 16th century is the guy who figured out all of this works like a clock. You can see the same things happen in the heavens again. It, it's mathematically accurate year after year. So he said we, we, we rewound the clock. And for years people didn't look because they thought Herod had died in 4 BC and now they're saying, oh, that was a, that was a typo or somebody got it wrong. He died in 1. BC. And when you look back at years two and three and what was going on in the heavens, amazing stuff. For people who studied the stars, and most people knew pretty well what was going on in the stars because they got to see them regularly. They didn't live in places like Houston where light would drown all that out. But he said uh, it was all written in the stars, the stuff that was happening. He talked about the king's planet, Jupiter orbiting over the king's star, which is Regulus, making kind of a halo over it. And then the conjunction of both Jupiter, and, which is the biggest planet, 
with uh, Venus, which is the brightest star in the sky, that came really close together, which would have made it the brightest star anybody had ever seen, the brightest light in the heavens that anybody had ever seen. The wise men knew what that meant. They went, Some, God's doing something, and that's why they wrote it. Most people probably went, oh, interesting. It's a pretty bright star. W would you have known? I'm thinking if I were in Bethlehem, probably I'd have been figuring out how to get my, my work done and get the people, all the people that were there to take the census, all the stuff that was happening. I probably didn't worry about all that stuff. And I may have missed the incredible thing that God was doing right here in our midst. And that's my question to you is do we do that still? Do you just go going about your business, doing what you're doing, and miss the incredible things that God is doing right now, right here among us. Because I believe it's here, and I believe it's here in more ways than we ever can, can imagine. That's what I look, someday I look forward to saying, wow, you mean you were doing all that? I didn't see that. I didn't see that. But if I can just do, be more aware of that and say, I want to see a little bit of that. I want to make myself open and see some of the things. <clears throat> I feel sure it will happen. The gospel lesson today is <clears throat> the coming of John the Baptist. And John the Baptist is just saying, we've been talking about for 400 years, this Messiah coming. Let me tell you, the light of the world has come. He's here. And all our job is, is to make the way plain. And they said, well, are you him? Are you Elijah come back from the dead? Or no? no, he said, I'm just a voice shouting in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord. Just look. Just keep your eyes open for what God's doing right here. Uh, Rembrandt, the famous painter, uh, paints a, uh, a symbol of this, what happened at the stable that night, of the shepherds coming in. Uh, they're out in their fields taking care of the sheep, and they see this star, and they see an angel that says, come and worship. And they do it. So they, go, they go to Bethlehem, and they find the, the crib, and they all... When he paints this, really cool, uh, Rembrandt must have been a very spiritual guy because it's got it all in there. He's got the baby in the manger. He's got the wise men peering over and looking at them. Right behind Jesus in the manger is a ladder uh, going up into a loft. But when you look carefully at it, it strangely resembles a cross. And it strangely has a rooster at the base of the, the ladder, which for us, represents not only crucifixion, but the uh, denial. Uh, so you kind of get the picture that because of all that stuff that's coming for this little baby, baby in the manger, uh, this is the Messiah. But it's called the shepherd's adoration. And when they look over into the crib to see the baby Jesus, uh, their faces are just lighted up. The light is emanating from the baby. So every, all the light that's in the stable is really coming from the crib. Uh, I think he's got it right. Because I think that was the message of John the Baptist. The light of the world has come. Which means we've got places of darkness, all kinds of ugliness, all kinds of fears, all kinds of hurts, all kinds of physical problems. But the light has come into the world. And if you're aware of that light, it illumines everything. It makes everything different. You can look at the whole world differently because of that light. Think about what that means for you. There was a, um, all of the family, remember Archie and Edith Bunker? Uh, they'd, gone, they'd gone to one of Edith's high school reunions. And while they were there, <coughs> Edith runs into an old classmate of hers named Buck. And uh, Buck, <coughs> uh, a nice looking guy in high school is now about 450 pounds, he's huge. But she sits down and has a delightful conversation with them. They share old times and old memories. And when she gets up, she goes and finds Archie. She says, oh, Buck, I had a good visit with him. Ain't he a beautiful guy? And Archie says, you did. Either you look at a guy and you think he's beautiful, I look at him and I see a blimp. And she does like Edith always does. She says, yeah, ain't it a shame? How profound. You look at somebody and see something beautiful, and I look at the same person and see a blimp. I 
think that's a, that's a peril for us, or the way we look at the world. Uh, you don't have to see with your eyes to be able to see the best stuff. You look with your heart. Isn't it true that Helen Keller was one of the most amazing, deepest women we've ever known, and she never saw with her eyes at all? Isn't it amazing that uh, you can see so deeply without having visual contact with things? Uh, I want you to ask yourself the question this day. Is, do, do you see even a little bit of what God sees? Or hear a little bit of what God hears? Do you look with your hearts or with your eyes? It makes a lot of difference. If you really believe that the light of the world has come, it will illumine things in a way that you can see better with your heart. Let me give you some examples. Um, the bright star, star over the Bethlehem is the first one. Would you have seen, hey, that's interesting, there's a big bright star over Bethlehem? Or would you have seen with your heart the birth of a Messiah? It's a lot of difference. Uh, when you look at protesters, golly, every time I turn on the news, somebody's protesting something, not just here, but all over the world. People are upset, they're marching, they're, everybody seems to be upset. You can see protesters and their, their anger, or if you look with your heart, you can say, oh, these are people who are really scared about the direction that we're going. All of a sudden, I feel compassion for them. Uh, you can look at egotistical, mean-spirited, obnoxious jerks, and there are a few of them in every one of our lives. Don't name any names, but you know what I'm talking about. The people you just hate to be around. And you can see them for being obnoxious jerks. Or you can say, you can look with your heart and say, wonder what pain or hurt in their life has caused them to be like that. Makes a whole lot of difference. There was a, uh, a lady who was in a car accident and she had her cheek all messed up. And every day she, when she'd go to put on her makeup, she oh, I just looked terrible. And she finally found a uh, uh, plastic surgeon. His name was Dr. Maxwell Moltz. She said, he said, I can fix that for you. We can take care of that. And so they did. They prepared for surgery. He went in. He said, I did a beautiful job of restoring that. And the day came when she could take off all of her bandages and she took off all of her bandages. He was just waiting for her to talk about what a good job, and she said, I don't see much difference. He said, do you want to see the pictures of what you looked like before? She said, well, I, I don't feel any different. Isn't that the truth about so many people? We're hurt so deeply inside. It doesn't matter what we look like on the outside, that we don't feel beautiful. We don't feel lovely. We don't feel loved. And if you think, well, maybe that's where that comes from, all those mean-spirited, obnoxious people, wouldn't it be better if I could see them with, with compassion and say, how can we help you heal and feel loved and make those wounds, those inside wounds, go away? Black Lives Matter. I get so tired of hearing that. You know, every, every time you see the news, people <coughs> protesting, it's, and you can look at it as being, those are there are forcing their will upon us, they're making outrageous claims, they're feeling like it's all our fault, and you can be mad as heck about that. Or you can look at them with the eyes of your heart and say, these are people who really want a better relationship. They may not be going about it in the best way, but they really want to be a part of something really good where they feel valued and loved. And maybe I can be a part of that healing. Political wranglings and power plays. You look at politics, and almost every one of us, are, those Democrats or those Republicans, and the, the things they do, why you just can't trust them. And you can see it for just being ugly, mean spirited political moves, or you can say, maybe, maybe those folks really have a deep concern for the direction <coughs> of our country, and they really believe that their way is the right way, <laughs> as outrageous as it may seem to be sometimes. Or, Maybe some of those power plays are for other reasons, like self-serving and making me some money. Even if you see that, these people are doing it for all the wrong reasons. You can say, what? what would make a person do that? Feel like they had to grab for everything they could in order to feel any worth. You can, you can kind of feel sorry for the people that have to do that, if you look with the eyes of your heart. Um, you look at 
people <laughs> occasionally. In fact, the funeral we had for Carol Wise, the family said about her, she was generous, extremely generous, way too generous. She would give gifts to her kids and then go to take out a loan to the bank because she couldn't pay for a loan. Way too generous. And she probably spoiled her kids rotten because of all the gifts that she gave them. You could say, how foolish. Or you could look at the eyes of your heart and say, now there's a woman whose heart overflowed. She had more than enough and wanted to do everything she could for somebody else. How cool is it that she loved like that? It makes all the difference in the world the way you look at it. You can see despair or fear or anxiety. Or you can see that the light has come into the world. And if the light really is in the world with us, then somehow all of this is in God's hands. And God's working in it for good. He promised that. And you don't have to make it come out right yourself. Isn't it amazing? Uh, if you think you can't do that, take Jesus as the example. Because that's exactly what Jesus did. Jesus continued to look with the heart. Look at the uh, prostitute, who the religious <laughs> official said, Do you know what kind of woman this is washing your feet? He said, I know exactly what kind of woman she is. But with the eyes of his heart, he could see the pain and the hurt that she was going through. And said, My daughter, your sins are forgiven. Go and sin no more. Look at the uh, tax collector, Matthew, who everybody hated. It isn't getting lower. I mean, that's six feet lower than a snake's belly in a wagon rut. It, what tax collectors were filth. And yet, Jesus had the audacity to say, Matthew, where is your house? I'd like to come eat with you today. He saw with his heart the pain that Matthew must have been feeling. Or look at the cross, probably the best example. When people are shouting, crucify him, crucify him. And Jesus instead looks with his, his heart and says, Father, forgive them. They just don't know what they're doing. Isn't that amazing? If you can look with the eyes of your heart and see what God sees, to know that the light is in the world, we need not be afraid, it can make all the difference in the world. Ain't it a shame that people can't do that? I can hear God saying to us again this day, do you see what I see? Do you hear what I hear? Do you know even a little bit of what I know? And how you answer that makes all the difference in the world. Will you pray with me? Open the eyes of our hearts, O oh Lord. Make us know that the babe born in Bethlehem did indeed bring light into our world. 2020, there is light emanating from Christ's likeness all around us. Help us to see the light and be people of the light. Help us to see with our hearts what you would see in the people around us. Cast out our fears and our hurts and our pains and our suspicions and make us full of your light. We thank you, Lord, for this glorious season and for the way people prepare for it. We thank you for the people that continue to love us and encourage us and strengthen us and make us know that we are loved. We thank you for your healing hand which continues to rest on our church, our community, and those folks that we have named like Carolyn and Carol's family and Debbie and Tom, David Hussman and Marvin Magura, Gloria, Reverend and Shirley Dean, and each one that we name silently. May your spirit draw especially close to us in a thousand different ways this Christmas season that we might know that you are indeed our King, the light of the world. And where meek souls will receive him still, may your dear Christ enter in.
Hear all these prayers and even the deepest prayers of our hearts as we pray together the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
figure anybody's going to hang around long enough to drink it this morning. But if you're like me and you really like a cup of coffee, just as you're going out, just holler and we'll get you a cup of coffee and bring it to you. Um, what else did I want to say? Um, there is an article circulating around on your emails that talks about another pandemic. But this one might not be so bad. It says it's, the virus is called inner peace. Be on the alert, it says, for symptoms of inner peace that could, could, could pose a serious threat to what has, up to now, been a fairly stable condition of conflict in the world. Some signs and some symptoms, in case you, uh, you know, lose your taste or something like that, you, these are the symptoms of that virus. Number one, a tendency to think and act spontaneously rather than based on fears of past experiences. An unmistakable ability to enjoy each moment. A loss of interest in judging people. Do you get that? You probably got the virus. A loss of interest in conflict. A loss of interest in uh, worry. That's a serious one. If you find out you can't worry anymore, you probably got it. Frequent, overwhelming episodes of appreciation. Contented feelings of connectedness with others in nature. Frequent attacks of smiling. And increased the tendency to let things happen rather than make them happen. An increased susceptibility to the love extended by others as well as the uncontrollable urge to extend it. Uh, that's the kind of virus that I think that the folks who went to the stable in Bethlehem uh, wanted us to catch. Catch the good news. The light of the world is with us. We need not fear. So as you go forth into this holy season, may the Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and fill you with his peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.